Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Reviews. Today I'm working again with Hanson Yachts based out of the Lambs Yacht Centre in Jacksonville, Florida. And this time I'm sharing with you a boat that was actually recently sold by Hanson. But it's such a top quality liveaboard that offers excellent value for money, I thought that my regular viewers of the channel would appreciate a sneak peek on board. So the boat in question is a 1990 Californian 45 motor yacht. The asking price for this was $169,000. She measures in at 45 foot in length with a beam of 15 foot 2 and she had a maximum bridge clearance of 17 foot 3. So she is capable of doing the great loop. Hanson Yachts used to actually be a Californian dealership years ago. And one element that took me by surprise is this boat was actually American built. She carries 70 gallons of holding tank, 165 gallon of fresh water and 440 gallon of fuel and they're all in aluminum tanks. And I can honestly see the appeal in this one because she'd be a great boat just for weekend cruising. You could use this as a liveaboard cruiser but you could even use this just as a houseboat and just keep it tied up in the marina. And for only $169,000 I think this one offers great value for money. As I step aboard and start to make my way to the bow, I like that high handrail that's on the outside, makes you feel safe and secure. Notice how wide and clear the decks are. There's plenty of room in the coach roof that you could lay out and relax in the sun with. You've got the fender baskets, so that way you don't need to worry about storing the fenders when the boat's underway. In this slip they've actually mounted the fenders onto the slip itself, so that's why it's not having the fenders in use on the boat. On the bow we've got the electric windlass and I also like the fact that the windlass has got a winch built into it so if you are doing a great loop you're going to find the advantage of that going through the lock gates. And as I pan the camera around this yacht's fast approaching 35 years old and in my opinion she doesn't look it at all. It's still a very impressive boat as you walk through the marina. And as I make my way aft you'll see how highly polished the hull is top and bottom. This one's had a lot of time, money and effort invested into it over the years. But as I enter into the aft cockpit, this is when you start to see how she's a perfect liveaboard. Imagine coming home from work and relaxing on board here. I like how you've got all these screens throughout the aft cockpit. That way you can keep it fully enclosed. You can roll them up in sections or you can remove it all together, whichever suits. You've got a little wet bar out here. And that includes having a fridge with an ice box. There's great headroom throughout this section. And I also like how well the wood is all varnished. It just gives it that quality feel. But it's also got a nautical feel to it. I still think boats should always look and feel like boats. And the screens are super clear. Sometimes these get fading over time. But I can't say that with this one. You've got lights built into the hard top so you can use this day and night. And then you see we get easy access down to that bathing platform. The bathing platform's also got boarding ladder. And on top of the hard top, there's actually a deck crane so you can launch a tender and it'll be easy enough to board a tender on that bathing platform. This yacht's only got one helm and you can access that on the flybridge with just a few short steps. And I like how accessible it is because that means all your friends and family can join you up here. And the flybridge actually offers full air conditioning. So if you keep those canopies in place, you'll make this nice and cool while we're underway. And as I pan around, you'll see all that seating area. You can easily seat six adults, if not more, in comfort. And then as I face aft, you can start to see that cradle for holding the tender, and also the deck crane too. And in terms of electronics, this one has definitely been updated since it was launched in 1990. You've got multiple multifunction displays. You've got GPS, chart plotter, sonar. We've also got the VHF radio, we've got autopilot, and you'll see we can control the windlass from up here. And then we've got a mixture of digital and analog engine instrumentation. And I like the fact it's as detailed, and there's also a rudder angle indicator, which always amazes me how rare that is on boats nowadays. And then of course you can see various vents for that air conditioning I referenced earlier. And throughout the entire flybridge here is plenty of storage up here. It takes most people a year to do the Great Loop, and I can easily understand how somebody would want to enjoy spending a year on board. And if you think this has all been impressive, wait till we step inside the main accommodation. So one advantage of only having a one helm on the flybridge is it gives you far more room down below. Notice all the storage panels that we have throughout the entire saloon. 
Those wraparound windows give great natural light. The yacht's actually kept an undercover storage, so it's a little limited just now. But you've got plenty of natural light, but you also have plenty of artificial light throughout. You've got very comfortable recliners. You've got your flat screen TV. And there's a stereo system installed with speakers throughout the entire boat, inside and out. Moving forward towards the bow, again notice all those storage compartments that we have in the saloon. Send just a few short steps down. We've got the galley on the port side and you've got a little dining area on the starboard side. And the galley on this one feels more like a kitchen and I say that in a good way. What I mean is if you're going to be living on board you want to be able to prepare all your favourite meals from home and you can easily do that on here. You've got plenty of countertop space, you've got double stainless steel sinks, you get the full height fridge freezer, you got your all important coffee maker, and because this is below basically the front windshield, there's great headroom through here. There's plenty of storage, you get your three burner electric stove top. And simple things, notice how the fridge freezer actually has a little locking mechanism, because as much as this is a great liveaboard, it is designed to still be a boat that you use and could potentially see rough weather. You've also got your full convection microwave oven. you got opening portholes for ventilation, especially if you're cooking. And then on the starboard side, you're going to find a U-shaped dining area. This table can drop down, and this can become a double berth. There's also storage underneath the berth. The cushions, both that you sit on, but also in your backrest, they have got some great padding to them. I'd imagine this is a very comfortable place to sit for any period of time. Quite like the artwork that's on this one, not only does it brighten the boat up, but it's also got that nautical feel to it again. And then moving forward into the bow, that's where you're going to find the VIP guest cabin. You've got a large island berth that's easily accessible on either side. You've got opening porthole hatches on the hull, but you've also got an overhead hatch too. And you see we've got a mounted TV on the bulkhead. Plenty of artificial light in here, you've got that ledge along either side for easy storage. But we do also have lockers in here that also benefit from being easily illuminated. And then we've got further storage underneath the bed. And this yacht's also got some of the softest carpet I've ever been on anywhere, not just on a boat. It is extremely comfortable to walk through this boat. The guest cabin is fully en suite. I like the fact that the toilet and the shower is separate. It's a very bright head compartment. You don't feel claustrophobic in here at all. And there's plenty of storage for all your toiletries and personal belongings. And then as I head aft and work my way back through the yacht, it's actually underneath these steps that lead up to the saloon that you access the engine compartment, but I'll show you that at the end of the video. Notice the easy hand holds it's in place for climbing up the steps. And then we'll make our way through the saloon, and this one has got a full width aft cabin. With again hand holds in place for accessing it. And the owner's stateroom is definitely a cabin that's going to make you never want to come back to land. This stateroom's got plenty of natural light that comes in from all the opening windows and portholes. You've also got plenty of artificial light. You've got great headroom. You've got tremendous amount of storage in here. You've got a vanity station that could easily double up as a desk. You could throw a laptop on there. You know, see we've got a TV mounted in the bulkhead. There's all sorts of multimedia devices attached to it. And then behind these mirrors on the port side, there's even more storage available. This creates you great hanging locker space. And you'll see here we've also got little boxes to the side. You could easily put shirts in there or shoes or something along those lines. And just like we saw in the saloon, this cabin has got wraparound storage. And if you open here, it's not all hanging locker. Some of it is drawers instead. But it's just great the amount of storage you have if you are going to be staying on board for extended periods of time. I also have more drawers in these little corner bedside cabinet type things. And I like all the way that the curtains are throughout. You could give this cabin plenty of privacy if you wanted to. But you could also open them up and enjoy things like a sunrise or sunset while you're at anchor. And as I mentioned earlier, this one does have the little vanity station, but you could easily use this as a desk if you preferred. And then behind the door that leads into the heads compartment, you'll see we've got hanging locker space in here as well. Now I'm willing to bet most of you were expecting this owner's stateroom to be en suite, but how many of you were truthfully expecting this one to be as well equipped, including having a hip bath installed? I know I wasn't. 
But this one has got one of the best head compartments I've seen in an aft cabin of a boat of this size. With your toilet, your shower, your sink, you've obviously got that bathtub. And plenty of storage again. And as we make our way out of this stateroom into the main saloon, I like the fact that for liveaboard use, this one's actually got a washer and dryer built into it. Keep all your clothes clean, but you're also going to have fresh towels and linens wherever you go. And then as I mentioned earlier, the easiest way to access the engines is through the steps that we have in the galley. This is actually easy to lift up. It's got strong hydraulic arms on both sides, so it's very safe and secure. You can also lock it open too, so if you're worried about that door shutting for whatever reason, it's got a strap to lock it in place. And once you make your way inside, you're going to find a pair of Caterpillar, these are 3208 TA engines. They're approximately 375 horsepower each, and they had around 2700 hours on the clock. We also have a Kohler 12.5 kilowatt generator, that's got less than 1000 hours on the clock. And all your day-to-day -day service and items, all your filters and strainers, they're also easily accessible on this yacht. That is very easy to perform routine maintenance before heading underway. And with as much space in here and as much light, there's also plenty of tools and spares included. It just makes it far easier to perform any maintenance, which is also going to mean it's far cheaper if you're going to hire people to do this because the hourly rate will be less. But as always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button. It really does make a difference. I'd like to thank Mike for the opportunity to come on board and share this one with you. And I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.